In a conversation between Russell Brand and Tucker Carlson, both voices express shared apprehensions regarding what they perceive as a veiled form of authoritarianism. Brand notes the insidious use of language centered around safety, care, and convenience as a guise for increasingly controlling measures. Carlson chimes in, labeling it as a form of totalitarianism, particularly when it involves regulating people's thoughts. The discussion extends to the manipulation of public anxiety, potential war narratives, and the influence of powerful global organizations and think tanks. Don't miss. How does authoritarianism manifest in the language of safety and care? What role does cultural tension play in preventing people from recognizing commonalities? Why does Russell Brand anticipate a shift in the aesthetics of totalitarianism in the coming years? This seems totalitarian. This seems totalitarian. In light of growing worries about the emergence of a totalitarian mentality and its possible encroachment on individual liberties, the socially aware populace shares a feeling of apprehension. Yeah. To control what people are allowed to think is, I think that's the definition of it. What I've started to, I suppose that's what, in essence, what I've started to feel and report on consistently, as you noted at the beginning of this, I'm not someone who's affiliated organically with conservatism or what you might regard as right-wing politics, although I, of course, recognize the legitimacy of a whole variety of political views and the right of people to hold different views yes. from one another. But it seems to me that authoritarianism now is being deliberately veiled in a, the insidious language of care, concern, safety, and convenience. What I've started to feel and report on consistently, it seems to me that authoritarianism now is being deliberately veiled in the insidious language of care, concern, safety, and convenience. Recognizing the hidden authoritarian implications of terms such as care, concern, safety, and convenience. We embrace the cautious spirit of democratic principles mindful of excessive government influence. It seems to me that we're in a time where we lurch from one crisis to another, that the crisis is always used to legitimize certain solutions, and a docile or terrified public is willing to participate in the proposed solutions that usually involve giving up their freedom. A docile or terrified public is willing to participate in the proposed solutions that usually involve giving up their freedom. The democratic fabric expresses concerns as it understands the public's tendency to react to perceived crises with fear or conformity. It emphasizes the danger where individual freedom could be geopartized in the quest for a sense of security. We are continually being invited to give up our freedom in exchange for safety or convenience. We are continually being invited to give up our freedom in exchange for safety or convenience, balancing trade, freedom with safety and convenience raises concerns among people. This balancing act involves considering democratic values like individual autonomy and protecting personal freedom, which are crucial. And it seems that this process is radically escalating. And I feel that this is something that we will see yet more of in the coming year. I feel like, you know, you've spoken publicly about this, that we're potentially on the precipice of serious and then to use your term hot a hot war with russia and like that's being reported on in my country right now it's like we're being prepped groomed primed for war is coming i feel like you've spoken we're on the precipice of a hot war with russia we're being prepped groomed primed for war is coming expresses concern about the possible rise of geopolitical conflicts acknowledging the public's growing anticipation of such situations it also questions democratic values and doubts the world's readiness to handle global crises effectively that we're being kept in a state of constant anxiety in order to induce compliance a nice we're being kept in a state of constant anxiety in order to induce compliance the public often worries about deliberate attempts to maintain a sense of unease and manipulate emotions for political gain that the ongoing stoking of cultural tension is to ensure that people don't begin to recognize that actually we have far more in common with one another than we do with these curious sets of establishment interests. That we have far more in common with one another than we do with these curious sets of establishment interests. 
Regardless of cultural differences, trust goes beyond just a shared value and connecting factor among people. It forms the foundation for a stable society. Seem to be transcendent of national democracy. To, to be explicit, I'm talking about organizations like the WHO, NATO, the WF, yes. and their astonishing influence. Added to that, the types of groups we've discussed already that have been exposed due to Lee Fang's reporting, these think tanks and apparently independent organizations who are not independent when you look at where they get their money, big pharma or the government or the military industrial complex or the kind of people they employ. People from deep state agencies such as the FBI and CIA that have extraordinary affinity with the legacy media and their ongoing agenda. So what I suppose I'm sensing is that totalitarianism now will not bear the inflections or aesthetics of the tw uh, 20th century militarism. Totalitarianism now will not bear the inflections or aesthetics of the 20th century militarism. To comprehend the complex development of totalitarianism, it is crucial to stay alert not only to obvious signs resembling 20th century militarism, but also to the gradual erosion of personal liberties by subtler dangers. Guys in medals with mustaches thumping their fists on a desk will be calmly told what, with, by gentlemen with beautifully coiffured hair or elegantly speaking ladies that just for our safety and just for our convenience, we will be returning to our homes. Just for our safety and just for our convenience, we will be returning to our homes. Empathy's role in balancing safety and convenience can justify choices, limiting personal freedom, sparking worries about potential government intrusion disguised as safeguarding public welfare, which poses challenges to democratic principles. And anyone that has an audience or a base or an ability to communicate with people to disrupt those types of narratives will be identified and destroyed. Anyone that has an audience or a base or an ability to communicate with people to disrupt those types of narratives will be identified and destroyed. In a landscape where there are concerns about stifling individuals who challenge or disrupt the prevailing narrative, the fundamental principles of freedom of speech, open dialogue, and skepticism towards censorship or oppression are crucial. Brandon and Carlson highlight a shared concern about the subtle encroachment of totalitarianism, emphasizing that it's taking on a different, more nuanced form than historical militaristic expressions. The public is urged to be vigilant about the erosion of freedoms under the pretext of safety and convenience. The conversation underscores the importance of critically assessing narratives presented by influential organizations and individuals with a call to resist compliance that may come at the expense of individual liberties. Unveiling authoritarianism camouflaged within the veneer of care, concern, safety, and convenience carries a profound psychological impact. Manipulating public sentiments for conformity can breed distrust and anxiety. Delving into the totalitarian control over public thought processes reveals how restrictions on individual thinking foster helplessness and potential resistance. Russell Brand epitomizes exploiting crises to legitimize solutions that sacrifice freedom for the allure of safety or convenience. The conflicts bring forth psychological ramifications encompassing fear dynamics, conformity pressures, and the erosion of personal freedom during crises. A nuanced understanding is imperative. Dissecting mentions of impending war with Russia and the role of cultural tensions in enforcing conformity. Examining how expectations for war and the perpetuation of cultural divisions sway public sentiment is crucial, potentially fostering a perpetual state of sensitivity to manipulation and anxiety. Russell Brand strategically highlights cultural tensions to obstruct recognition of shared commonalities among people. Scrutinizing the psychological fallout of this strategy is paramount, unraveling its contribution to division, the obstruction of unity, and the perpetuation of influential control. The anticipation that totalitarianism will be communicated through modern aesthetics employing calm discourse over militaristic displays, reshapes public perception, nuances, and authoritarian influence. 
assessing the psychological impact of such targeted behavior on individuals capable of expressing dissent involves probing discussions about identification, the suppression of disruptive voices, potential fears, stress, and self-censorship. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content. And although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.